Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Genki One Lesson Six live stream. Tonight we're going to be covering the T form and different ways to use it, and it's a pretty straightforward lesson. I think it's a little bit difficult, but it's super useful. You're going to be using the T form constantly from this point on, and there's also some other good news that's going to come up along with the T form. So that's pretty exciting. Just want to say thank you to my patrons. We just hit a hundred patrons at Tokini Andy the other day. I think we're at like 103 now. So thank you so much to all of you guys for uh, supporting this channel. Lesson six, the T form. Today we're going to be covering the T form, polite requests using the T form, sequence of events also using the T form, you may or may I also using the T form, prohibition. Uh, that's also using the Tay form, explaining reasons, which does not use the Tay form, and offering assistance, which is using something we actually already learned. The first part is going to be going with the Tay form, which is going to be basically the most difficult part of the lesson, I guess. It's the part that has the most memorization involved. But when we get that down, the rest of the lesson is going to be actually really straightforward. There's actually, besides the example sentences, only like one explanation slide per section after the Tay form. So that's pretty exciting. So before we can get started with the te form, we have to do a little bit of review. So you'll remember that all verbs in Japanese end with an u syllable in their dictionary form. And by that I mean they end in the character u, ku, su, tsu, nu, mu, gu, bu, or du. All verbs, right? If it ends in one of those characters, it's probably a verb. Now I always recommend that you learn verbs in their dictionary form because that makes most conjugations much, much more straightforward, and the te form is no exception. In Genki, they present you with two different types of verbs, do verbs and u verbs. I really hate those explanations because even in Japan, for Japanese students, when they're in school, they teach this, godan verbs. I'm gonna make another video explaining why they're called go, as in five godan verbs, five step verbs, but we're not gonna go over that tonight. Just know that there's godan verbs and there's ichidan, single step verbs. I'll explain what they are a little bit as we go along. But basically, godan verbs are any verb that ends in u, tsu, ru, mu, nu, bu, su, ku, or gu. And there's a little star here because some verbs that end in du are actually ichidan verbs. But all the rest, they're always godan verbs. So with the mas form and with the past tense of like the polite conjugations, right? There was just a basic little simple rule you could learn to learn how to conjugate into the into the mas form, right? Super straightforward. All you had to know was that you change the u to an e and the tsu to a chi. Well, there's no like hard and fast rule for the te form. Unfortunately, there's just four different endings that you have to just memorize. But the good news is, is that depending on the ending of a verb in its dictionary form, it's always going to be the same, except for do. <laughs> always except for do. Let's just go over them really quick. Luckily, they're they're sort of grouped. There's only one, two, three. There's four groups with a little special one right here. But basically, u, tsu, and du are going to end in a small tsu plus a te. So a te, right? That small tsu is like a little pause. They end in te. Okay, you cut that last character, u, tsu, or du, and add this. And that's the conjugation for the te form. And I'll explain what the te form does in a little bit. Mu, nu, and bu, they all conjugate into nde, nde, su. You cut the su and add shite. For ku, you cut the ku and it becomes ite. And for gu, you cut the gu and it becomes ide. Okay? So you just have to kind of memorize those. There's no wonderful way to remember them. Unless you want to use something like this, maybe. Uh, go.
I don't know, you could always watch that. <laughs> Maybe that could help you remember these conjugations if you're having trouble with them. I personally just memorized them myself this way and it worked out. Some examples will probably help you memorize them a little bit better. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into that. The te form is generally, it's like a request. So if you just use the te form on its own, for example, u becomes small two te, right? So utau becomes utatte. Now utatte on its own is a polite request. It's not polite, but it's a request. It's not a command, it's just a request. So it's it basically saying, hey, sing. Utatte, ru, noru becomes notte, get on. Matte be means wait, wait, wait. You've probably heard in anime or something. Chotto matte, that means just wait a minute, wait a second. Chotto matte, that's using the te form, right? Kite means listen, listen. It's, it's not commanding someone to listen. It's asking them, it's requesting that they listen to you. Isoide means hurry, hurry, hurry. So I put these together. Utsu, uru, tsu because they end in the same way, and these ones are, are similar. Ku becomes ite, and gu becomes ide. So hurry, isoide, nomu, and asobu, and shinu, both you change the endings to nde. So nomu becomes nonde, drink it, drink it. Asonde, play, play, come on, play. Shinde, that means die, I guess. And hanashite means speak, and that's it. After you memorize those endings, I've got some really good news for you. And that good news is you already know now how to make the informal past tense. Because the informal past tense, verbs are conjugated exactly the same way as the te form, except it doesn't end in te or de, it ends in ta or da. So if we went back here and we were to change these into their informal past tense, it would be utatta, saying, notta. Got on. Matta. I waited. Hmm, that's a weird one. Kita. Listened. Isoida. Hurried. Continuing on. Nonda. Asonda. Shinda. Hanashita. So it's exactly the same. The, the past informal tense and the te form, they're the same. Just the last character is changed. So if you can memorize, sorry, if you can memorize the te form, you know the past tense as well. So that's pretty straightforward. Pretty cool. I, I was pretty happy about that when I realized when I was studying. So hopefully you can make some use of that. Now the bad news is that just like all the other verb conjugations, there are ichidam verbs. So ichidam verbs are verbs that end in iru or edu. And by that, I mean, if you write out a verb in romaji, like taberu, you get taberu. And you'll notice that the last character there is an e followed by du, so that's an edu verb, which means that it's most likely an ichidam verb, except for a couple exceptions that I'll show you down below. And they are, they're exceptions for all the other conjugations we've covered so far as well. So if you've already got them memorized for those, you'll know that they're an exception for this one as well. So that's not too bad. Just like with the other ichidam verbs, it's actually super easy to make the te form with them. All you gotta do is cut the du and add te. So some examples are mite, nete, Okite, wake up, get up, nete is sleep, and mite is look. And remember, those are requests. If we were to do the past tense of those, it would just be mita, I looked, neta, I slept, okita, I woke up, or I got up. If you've watched the original Lesson 6 video, you'll know, you'll know that I covered the te form and the past tense together. I'm not doing that explicitly here, but I just, I do want to mention it because you can already use it now. So the same exceptions that there are for the other conjugations are exceptions for the te form as well. So, hairu, hashiru, iru, kairu, kagiru, kiru, shaberu, shiru, keru, suberu. They all sound like they would be iru and or that they would be iru and edu verbs, but they're not. You would conjugate these the same as a regular godan verb. So it would be haitte, hashitte, itte. You would never say this for need. But anyway, kaite, kagite, kitte, shabette, shitte, kette, and subette. So that's that's pretty much it. Except that there are the same irregulars as well, plus one more. The irregular verbs for the mas uh, conjugation and for the mashta conjugation were kuru and suru, right? Those are always irregular for most conjugations. So kuru becomes kite, 
suru becomes shite. And there's one more, which is iku. Iku for the te form and the informal past tense is irregular. So if you see it ends in ku, you would think it would be ite with two e sounds, right? But it's not. It's a small tsu and a te for iku. So iku becomes itte. So just be aware of that. You have to memorize that for the te form and the past tense. And that's it. There's there's no special things you have. You just have to memorize those four endings, basically, or the five endings, I guess. And you've got the te form down. But let's go ahead and do some examples and jump into a dialogue. So our first examples are denki wo tsukete, turn the light on. Denki wo tsukete, tsukete means to turn on. I think that was one of the vocabulary words in Genki Lesson 6. Party ni kite, come to the party. This is a request, remember, not a command. Party ni kite, you gohan wo tsukute. This, this is kind of rude. You wouldn't really want to say to someone, you gohan wo tsukute. You could, you could add what is our next, our next part. The next section is kudasai, which would be please. Please make dinner would be you gohan wo tsukute kudasai, which is, which is polite. We're covering that in the next section, so if you want to learn more about that, stick around till then. This is, of course, cooked dinner. It's a request to cook dinner. Some longer, more difficult sentences we can go over are Isu no ue no taoru wo potte Take the towel on the chair or get the towel from off, off the chair, I guess from on top of the chair. So Isu no ue no taoru wo potte I guess another, like a literal translation for this would be get the towel that's on the chair would be sort of a more literal translation of this. Our next sentence is utatte odotte utatte odotte sing and dance. Jibun no nomimono wo motte kite bring your own drink. Tomodachi mo tsurette kite ne bring your friends too. Now, I just want to mention one thing. If you guys have gone over the vocabulary in well either on the Patreon videos, if it's on the Patreon videos, you already know about this. If you've gone over the vocabulary on your own in the textbook, then you'll know that Genki presents these two verbs, motte kuru and tsurete kuru, as irregular verbs. And that's just, that's just wrong. It's plain wrong. I don't know why Genki does it. I don't know why Genki does a lot of things sometimes, but I definitely have no idea why they, pre why they present motte kuru, tsurete kuru, and denma suru as irregular verbs, because that's just insane. They're not in regular, irregular verbs. Motte kuru and tsurete kuru are their, their grammar points. It's a grammar point. Motte is motsu, right? To carry or to bring. And tsurete is uh, tsureru, which is to bring something somewhere. And when you use the te form and the verb kuru, which is to come, it means to bring something or to come and do something or to do something and come over here, right? It's a grammar point that's not in Genki 2 or in Genki 1, which is probably why they presented it this way, but I don't know why they lied about it. It's just, it's another grammar point, te kuru. And in this case, motte kuru means bring. And tsurete kuru also means bring, but bring a person, whereas motte kuru is bring a thing. And denwa suru, it's just denwa, which is telephone, and suru, which is the verb to do. So it's just like a normal, like benkyo suru. It's the same exact idea, like a be verb, an is verb. I don't know why they presented it that way, that sort of rub me the wrong way, but it is what it is. <laughs> Let's keep going. Today we are doing a continuation of the dialogue last week, which is where Mr. A went on a date with Miss B, or maybe it was the other way around. I have no idea, but it's a continuation of that. So let's go ahead and see what happened. First, I'll read it slowly and then at full speed, then we'll go over the meaning and I will get to your questions immediately after that. So, suatte, suatte, ah, arigato, oshiete, Nani ga? B san to no deto da yo. Nani? Alright, full speed. Suatte, suatte. Ah, arigato. Oshiete? Eh? Nani ga? B san to no deto da yo. Nani? Alright, let's see what that means. Suatte, suatte means sit, sit, or sit down, sit down. Maybe there's a chair in the room. Ah, arigato. I think everyone understands that one. It just means, oh, thanks. Oshiete. This means tell me. It can also mean teach me. So if you were to ask your teacher to teach you something, 
you, you wanted them to teach you something special. I don't know. You want them to teach you judo or something or taekwondo. I don't know. You would say, oshiete, oshiete, sore, that thing, right? In this case, it can also be used to mean, tell me. Tell me something that I want to know that I don't know. Oshiete, e, nani ga, huh? Tell you what? So in this sentence, uh, I just want you to know that this, the, uh, the dialogue in this, in this lesson is a bit casual. I'm doing a lot of dropping just to make it sort of a more natural conversation. So in this case, we're dropping a part of the sentence. Eh, nani ga, nani ga oshiete hoshi would be the full sentence. We're not going to learn te hoshi tonight, but basically that's what we're dropping. Um, but you can just say nani ga when someone says they want you to do something and you don't know what they're what exactly it is that they want you to do, especially if it's the verb oshiete. You can use nani ga. What do you want me to teach you? What do you want me to tell you? When you don't know what they're asking about. B san to no deto da yo. Your date with B. So this is a little bit confusing. We haven't gone over this grammar and I was a, I was a little conflicted on whether or not I actually wanted to use this, this, uh, this grammar point. But it's not too bad. Let's go over it. B san is of course B san to, right? This is the together to, the with to. So what we have dropped there is a san, A san to B san to no de to. So this no is the possessive no. So it's like A and B's, right? The possessive S date. A and B's date. So B san to no de to da yo. So your date with B san. So obviously your here is also the possessive. So that's what that means. It's a little bit confusing and I hope it, it doesn't drive you too far off. If, if it's too confusing, don't worry about it. But basically, this is the possessive no, and this is the to particle that means with. And we're dropping a son's name. Nani? Just means what? So let's go ahead and move on to polite requests in Japanese. It's actually super straightforward. All you have to do is take the te form, which you just learned, and add kudasai. Te kudasai. And that's it. You've got a polite request. Before it was a request, now it's a polite request. So some examples are tatte kudasai, please stand up. In schools, right, before you start a class, like in high schools or elementary schools or whatever, before you start class, the kids stand up and they bow and say onegai shimasu to the teacher. Now they, the teacher does not say tatte kudasai, they use a word that means stand up or attention. And that is kiritsu, kiritsu. And then sit down would be suatte kudasai, but they say uh, chakseki, chakseki, chakseki. It's just, it's a noun that means sit up and attention or stand up, just so you know. But tatte kudasai means please stand up. Mite kudasai, please look. Shawa wo abite kudasai. Take a shower, please, or please take a shower. Shawa wo abite kudasai. Please take a shower. Some more complicated sentences. Tanjoubi wo oshiete kudasai. Please tell me your birthday. Remember, oshiete, oshieru is tell me or teach. Please teach me my birthday would also be an accurate translation, but we would never say it in English, so it's please tell me your birthday. We would say this in, in Japanese. Tanjoubi wo oshiete kudasai. Densha ni notte kudasai. Get, please get on the train. Remember, noru is to get on, so we use small tsu and a te. To conjugate in the te form. Notte kudasai. Please get on. Kotai wo kaite kudasai. Write the answer, please. Kotai means the answer. It's a noun that means the answer. Kotairu is a verb that means to answer, by the way. It's exactly the same. You just add a ru at the end and it becomes a verb that means to answer, by the way. So kotaite would also be a way you could say this entire sentence. Kotai wo kaite kudasai. Write the answer, please. All right, on to our continuing dialogue. Oshiete kudasai. Deto janakatta yo. Eh? Uso. Uso janai yo. Honto ni? Oshiete, oshiete. Mo, yamete kudasai. All right, let's go over that at full speed. Oshiete kudasai. Deto janakatta yo. Eh? Uso. 
嘘じゃないよ。本当に教えて、教えて。もう、やめてください。All right, let's go ahead and see, and see what that looks like in English. Our first sentence is, Oshiete kudasai. That means, please tell me. Remember, we had Oshiete in the last section too, and that was just, tell me. This time it's, Oshiete kudasai, which is, please tell me. Deito janakatta yo. It wasn't a date, really. This is janakatta, which is from our past. I guess that was past tense of janai. Did we ever cover that? I think we might have in lesson four. Yeah, anyway, we did. We covered that in lesson four. So that's the past tense of Janai. It wasn't a date, really. Eh? Uso. Yeah, right. So, Uso, right? It's a noun that means lie. So, this is like, eh, lies. But I translate it as, yeah, right. That's probably a more accurate in English translation of this sentence. Eh? Uso. Yeah, right. It's sort of a sarcastic, right? Yeah, right. You're lying. Uso. Uso ja nai yo. It's not a lie, really. It was the literal translation. It could, in this context, it would just be seriously. Uso ja nai yo. Is how that would be sort of translated. Honto ni? Honto ni? With a question rising intonation means really? Honto ni? Also means really. Right? But with a rising intonation at the end, it means really? With a question. Oshiete, oshiete, tell me, tell me. Mo. This mo means already. That's what it literally means. So, yamete kudasai. So, yamete means to stop or to quit something. Yamete kudasai. Please quit it already. And that already is mo. Yamete kudasai. Please quit it already. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into describing a sequence of events. I think all the questions are out of the way. A sequence of events can be described with the te form. So you end a sentence with the te form and then just connect the second event, generally using a comma or something, but obviously when you're speaking, there's no comma. The second event will end in a regular conjugation, whether it's informal or formal or past tense, it'll depend on whatever it is and what, when you did it. The when the event happened and the tense of it also, it'll depend on the second event. So an example, a very simple example would be itte, tabemas, go, eat. Or I went, if this is past tense, I went and I ate. Itte tabemashita. I went and I ate, for example. And that's, that's a sequence of events, right? You have two verbs there. That's, that's one way you can connect longer sentences and make something more complex. Which I know is hard in the beginning because Genki doesn't teach you too many connectors like that. And this is one of the first ones that is going to be super useful. I've only got complex sentences for this section because it's sort of a complex idea. So let's go ahead and try it. Toshokan ni itte benkyo shimas. I go to the library and study. So notice we have two sentences here basically, right? It's Toshokan ni iku, go to the library. Benkyo shimas, study. So if you want to connect those together into one single idea, you just make iku, go, into the te form. And you remember iku would not be itte, even though ku, verbs that end in ku are, you cut the ku and add itte. Iku is an, it's an irregular when it comes to the informal past tense and the te form. So it's itte, benkyo shimasu. Suika o kitte tabemashita. So I cut a watermelon and ate it. Supa ni itte uchi ni kairimasu. So this is sort of a sequence that I go to the supermarket and then I go home. I go to the supermarket and go home. Supa ni itte. Uchi ni kaerimasu. Maybe it's like someone's asking you, what are you going to do? What, what are you doing? Like you're getting in your car. Ah, supa ni itte uchi ni kaerimasu. So I'm going to go to the supermarket and then I'm going to go home. That's basically what this is. It's a nice, useful way to make sequences of events. Our dialogue continues with C harassing A. Eh, tsumaranai. Gomen nasai. Ja, oshiete? Doko ni itta? Eto Macdonaldo Macdonaldo Big Mac o tabete Mos Baga ni ikimashita. Ha? Full speed. Eh, tsumaranai. Gomen nasai. Ja, oshiete? Doko ni itta? Eto 
マクドナルド。マクドナルドビッグマックを食べてモスバーガーに行きました。はぁ、あ、?Alright, let's go ahead and see what that is in English. So, C says, えぇ、ー、ーつまらない。So, in this sentence, this えぇ、ー、could be translated as boo. Boring. So, つまらない is boring. That's, that's basically what this is. えぇ、ー、つまらない。えぇ、ー、boring. ごめんなさい。Of course, you probably know that that means sorry. Our next sentence was, じゃあ教えて Well, if you're sorry, well then, tell me. じゃあ教えてどこに行った Now, I threw in this as a little bit of a curve. It's not really a curveball. I'm just showing you that the past tense is exactly the same as the day form, the informal past tense. Remember, I'm doing more of an informal dialogue today. So, どこ is where, and itta is the past tense, the informal past tense of go. The te form is also itte. So, literally, the only thing you have to change is the te to a ta, and you've got the informal past tense. Sweet, right? So, doko ni itta? Where did you go? Eto, um, McDonald's. McDonald's. If you remember last week's dialogue, A san and B san went to McDonald's. B san hated the Big Mac, thought it was terrible, and that McDonald's was a dirty, filth, like a garbage pile. And she took B. To Moss Burger, which is another chain of burger joints in Japan. And they got rice burgers. Well, burgers that have rice patties instead of buns. On we go. McDonald's? McDonald's? Big Mac を食べて Moss Burger に行きました We ate a Big Mac and went to Moss Burger. So this is a good one because you'll notice that I mentioned, you might remember that I mentioned that the final verb in the clause. Indicates what the tense is for the whole, the whole thing. So, Big Mac を食べて From there, we don't know if this was past tense or if it's present tense or if it's continuing or, or what it is. Mos ba ga ni ikimashita. Here we see that it's the past tense. This just tells you what the full tense of the clause is. Big Mac を食べて Mos ba ga ni ikimashita. We ate a Big Mac and went to Mos Burger. Ha? Huh? huh? This is just a, an exasperated, like, what? What? And that's it. While I continue on to you may or and may I in Japanese. So you may in Japanese is pretty easy. It's just the te form plus mo i. So mo is the mo particle. I is good. It's right. It's just good. And then you can add des to the end of it to make it a little bit more polite. So te mo i. May I, the question form, is te form plus mo plus i, mo i. Now I have these in parentheses because if you just rise your, raise your intonation at the end, it's sort of a informal may I, can I. If you add desu ka, that's the more formal version. So te mo i desu ka? And that's how you say you may and may I. So some examples of that are akete mo i desu ka? May I open it? The informal version would be akete mo i. Remember, this is just the mo particle plus i, which means good. So, a literal translation of this, a literal translation would be something like, Would it be good if I opened it? That would be somewhat of a more literal translation of it. Is it good if I open it? It, it doesn't make sense in English that way. So, we change it to may I open it or can I open it? Akete mo i desu ka? Suatte mo i desu ka? Can I please sit down? May I please sit down? Either way would be fine. Denwa shite mo i. The formal version of this would be Denwa shite mo i desu ka? Can I call you please? Denwa shite mo i. And that's it. That's how you use the, the、uh, may I or can I. It's just the te form plus mo i. Some more complicated sentences for us to try out are Sono mai ni. 昼ごはんを食べてもいいですかその前に昼ごはんを食べてもいいですか May I have lunch before that? その前に We haven't covered that expression yet, but it's just my, which means before, and その that, I'm sorry, before that. So it's just translated literally like you see it. Before that. その前に The ni particle is the one that you use with expressions of time, basically. その前に昼ごはんを食べてもいいですか<clears throat> May I have lunch before that? Sorry about that. A, I'll get rid of that later. お祭りに行って
。踊ってもいいですか ?Can I go to the festival and dance, please? 踊ってもいいですか ?Can I dance, please? So we use the,、uh, the connecting sequence te form and the te mo i me i form. Can I go to the festival and dance, please? お祭りに行って踊ってもいいですか踊るは踊るです。I don't think that's been covered in Genki yet. I'm not positive, but 踊る。That's the dance. ご飯の後にアイスを食べてもいい、so、ご飯の後。後 means after. 後に。And you put, use the no particle con- to connect it to what, after what you want to do something. So, ご飯の後 after the meal. にアイスを食べてもいい Please, can I eat ice cream after the meal? On we go to the dialogue, and then I will get to your questions immediately after that. だってデートじゃなかった質問してもいいいいよ B さんが好き書いてもいいですか書いてはいけません。Full speed. だってデートじゃなかった。質問してもいいいいよ。B さんが好きえ、書いてもいいですか書いてはいけません。Let's check out what that means in English. だってデートじゃなかった。Okay, this is new. It doesn't show up in Genki at all. I don't even think it shows up in the second Genki. I may be wrong about that. Correct me if I'm wrong. だって。This means because, as I said. So this means that I've mentioned this before. だって。And it's sort of like a flustered expression. You've prob- if you watch anime, you've heard this before. だって。It just means because. So there, there has to be a sentence before this, right? Someone said something. And you're reiterating something you've already said. And you're frustrated that you have to do it again. So you say, because, as I said, it wasn't a date. だって Super useful. It's not really super polite, but it's super useful. だってデートじゃなかった質問してもいい So this is, we've, we've dropped the ですか Because we're among friends here. 質問 means a question. And you, you do a question. So the literal translation is Can I do a question? I guess the literal translation would be Is it good if I do a question? Shitsumon <laughs> shitemo ii. Can I ask a question? いいよ Sure. B さんが好き Do you like B? Pretty straightforward. We covered ski in, I believe, lesson five last week. I think it was last time, two weeks ago. Eh, kaite mo i desu ka? What? Can I go home? He's just flustered. Kaite mo i desu ka? Kaite wa ikemasen. This is what the next section covers, and it's forbidding things. I forbid you to go home. It could also be translated as you must not go home. Kaite wa ikemasen. And that brings us to prohibiting activities in Japanese. Not prohibition of drinking or anything like that, just prohibiting activities. It's just the te form plus wa. And this is what、uh, was just pointed out in chat. It's not ha, it's once again just like the wa particle pronounced wa, like w a. Ikemasen. Ikemasen was, means must not do. It's basically ikeru, ikeru, can go. It's, um, it's based on that. It's a grammar point based on that. You don't have to worry about that too much. But anyway, te form plus wa plus ikemasen, which means cannot do or must not do, gives you a prohibition. Hashite wa ikemasen. I forbid you to run or you must not run. So basically, if you were telling rules in class or something, you might say something like Hashite wa ikemasen. Actually, in, in my kindergarten class, often when I was、um, asking the kids if they knew whether or not they were allowed to do something, I might say something like, Basu no naka ni wa hashite wa ikema sen. And I would let them say the sen because that would sort of re- reinforce it for them. Hashite wa ikema sen. So if I were to say, Hashite wa ikemas, that means you can run. A better way to say that would be hashiremasu, but that's, that's besides the point. 
But anyway, just pausing like that for the kids sort of reinforced them, got them involved. Hashite wa ikema sen. That means I forbid you to run or you must not run. Tabete wa ikema sen. I must not eat. Depends on the context, obviously. It could also be you must not eat or they must not eat or whatever. Tomatte wa ikemasen. I forbid you to stop. This stop is not like yameru, yamete. This is stop like stopping a vehicle. This is actually the kanji you would see on a stop sign. In Japan, it would say tomare, which is the command to stop. But this is tomatte wa ikemasen. I forbid you to stop. You must not stop. And that's it. That's that's the whole form. So jumping into the dialogue, we have kaite wa ikemasen. So, kaite wa ikemasen. Nande? Oshiete? B san ga suki desu ka? Sore wa kite wa ikemasen. Eh, tsumaranai. Full speed. Kaite wa ikemasen? So, kaite wa ikemasen. Nande? Oshiete? B san ga suki desu ka? Sore wa kite wa ikemasen. Eh, tsumaranai. So, I just want to point out really quickly that you'll notice that this is formal, right? Te wa ikemasen is very formal language. You're not going to say it generally. It's often on signs or if you're being in a very formal situation where you're giving out listing rules, basically. So, it's super formal. So why are these friends who have been talking even within this part of the dialogue speaking informally using te wa ikemasen? And the, the reason for that is actually really happens is when you're really, really emphasizing something or you're being sort of not sarcastic, but, but sort of sarcastic or just playful almost. It's sort of playful speaking super formally in this way. It can be a playful way to speak with your friends, just being like, Joking around almost. Kaite wa ikemasen yo. Like, you must not go home, or you're, I forbid you to go home. There's less formal ways to say that, but saying it that way can seem sort of playful if you go super formal. You can also go super, super, super formal when you're really, really angry. And that's a form of sarcasm in Japanese. I mentioned to someone in the Discord the other day that sarcasm doesn't really work in Japanese, not the way that we think of sarcasm, but one way I've seen a sort of sarcasm used in Japanese is when people are extremely angry using super, super, super formal Japanese with people who are very close to them, which is very interesting. And that can be a sort of sarcastic way to talk to people. But let's go ahead and go over the English. Kaite wa ikemasen. That's how the last se- that last dialogue ended, by the way. So I'm asking, or A is asking, you forbid me to go home? Kaite wa ikemasen. So, exactly. Kaite wa ikemasen. I forbid you to go home, or you must not go home. Nande? Why? Oshiete? Tell me. B san ga suki desu ka? Do you like B? Sore wa kite wa ikemasen. I forbid you to ask that. Eh, tsumaranai. Boo. Boring. So the next section is explaining a reason for something in Japanese. And that is using kara. Now I just want to, I want to blow off some, not steam, but I want to mention that I don't like that Genki teaches this in this way in this lesson. I think they should have taught the other usage of kara first because it's way more useful and way more common. And that is kara can be used as a conjunction. You can connect sentences together using kara to mean because. So, tabeta kara nani nani shimashita. So, because I ate, I did this. Or I, I ate, so I did this. And that, that's the most common usage of kara, in my opinion, is as a conjunction. I don't know. B san ga suki desu kara nani nani shimasu. I like B. So I will do this thing. That is the most common usage of kara. But beyond this little sentence I'm talking to you about right now, I'm not going to cover it right now because it does cover it eventually. Instead, for some reason, it teaches you this usage of kara. It's not wrong. It's grammatically fine. I just, I don't like how it sounds. I think it's, it's, I don't know. I don't like it. 
but I'm going to teach it to you anyway. So to say, basically to explain a reason for something, you've got the reason plus at the end of it, I guess, kara. So for example, isogashi desu kara, because I'm busy. I mean, it's not true. I do use this sometimes, but the other one is way more common. So for these sentences, generally, you'd have to have like a situation before it. So maybe in this situation, you might say something like, I'm not going to go to the party tomorrow. Why? So in the next sentence, you'd say, And that's how Genki teaches it. And the reason I don't like it is because most people wouldn't say that. They would say, That's how most people would speak. They would say, they're, not, they're busy. So they're not going to go to the party. But for some reason, Genki teaches it as, I'm not going to go to the party. Because I'm busy. It just sounds so unnatural. It's not wrong. And some people, you know, there are situations where you might do that. You might say something like, you might have a situation where like, you say to a friend, ah, sono party ni wa ikimasen. I'm not going to go to that party. And then they look at you like, huh? And then you're like, ah, isogashii desu kara. Because I'm busy. So that's the situation that this would happen in, but it's not nearly as common as when you would use kara as a conjunction, which I use literally every day, all the time. So just keep that in mind with this section, it's not that important. Ikimasu kara, because I will go. Suki janai desu kara, because I do not like this. So I, these, these aren't super important sentences, but basically I just wanted to point out that you can end desu kara you can have ikimasu, so a verb, plus kara, or, you know, janai desu kara. And anything, any ending can end in kara. So, iku kara, ikimasu kara, isogashii kara, isogashii desu kara, suki janai desu kara. Just at the end of any sentence, you add kara, and it means because. And that's where I'm going to leave that, because, because it's not that, it's pretty straightforward, and it's also not, I don't, I don't think, as useful as the, the conjunction which I just explained, and which we will go over in a later lesson. But I am going to use it here in the dialogue. So let's go ahead and cover. Hazukashi desu kara. Kawaii. Yamete kudasai. Ja, kaite mo ii yo. So desu ka. Tsumaranai desu kara. Full speed. Hazukashi desu kara. Kawaii. Yamete kudasai. Ja, kaite mo ii yo. So desu ka. <clears throat> Let's go over the English for that. Hazukashii desu kara. Hazukashi means to be embarrassed, or I am embarrassed. It's an adjective that means embarrassed. Because I'm embarrassed. And that's, uh, if you remember in the last sentence, it's why, it's basically explaining why uh, A doesn't want to tell C whether or not he likes B. That's confusing. And the Patreon, when I go over this dialogue, A is myself, C is another character of Yuki's and B is Yuki. Just so you're aware, it makes a little more sense without with actual names. Kawaii. Ah, cute. Yamete kudasai. Please stop. <laughs> or please quit it. Ja, kaite mo ii yo. Fine. You can go home. So desu ka? Is that so? Or, oh yeah? Tsumaranai desu kara. Yeah, because you're boring. Tsumaranai desu kara. On we go to offering assistance in Japanese. We covered this structure in the last sentence, and it was the mashoka. In the last lesson, we covered it as shall we walk, for example. Aruki mashoka, shall we walk? In this lesson, it's, it's used in a slightly different way. And that is, shall I do something for you, basically. Uh, we already covered this the structure in the last lesson, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but basically you take the mas stem. If you don't know how to make the mas stem, jump back into the lesson three stream or the lesson four stream where I go over it even faster. And you can learn to make the mas stem there. But basically you take the mas stem and just connect masho ka, ka is the question marker, and that's that. And that can mean, depending on the situation, shall I do something for you? For example, tetsudai masho ka, shall I help you? Hon wo yomimashou ka? Shall I read a book? Hiru gohan wo tsukurimashou ka? Shall I make lunch? 
And that's it. It's um, in the last lesson we covered sentences like arukimashou ka, and that obviously couldn't be shall I walk. It's more of shall we walk because yomi mashou means let's read, and yomi mashou ka means shall we read. But depending on the context, it can mean shall I do something. So in the in the dialogue for Genk, this lesson in Genki. An older woman gets on the bus, and Robert, who is having some trouble in class, I guess he's falling asleep a lot, he valiantly offers her his seat, and when she says she doesn't need it, he offers to hold her bags. So he says, shall I hold your bags? And uh, that would be, nimotsu wo mochimashou ka? So shall I do something? So contextually speaking, the woman obviously knows he doesn't mean let's hold the bags, right? Contextually, we know that it's shall I read a book, but there's no difference stylistically, even in pronunciation. It's exactly the same as let's hold the bags, but contextually speaking, we would know that it means shall I do this thing for you. So jumping into the dialogue, we have ojama shimashita. Hai, mata ne. Ah, B-san. Konnichiwa. Kino arigato. Ii desu yo. Tanoshikatta desu. A, boku mo nimotsu wo mochimashou ka? Ja, arigato gozaimasu. And full speed. Ojama shimashita. Hai, mata ne. A, B san. Konnichiwa. Kino arigato. いいですよ。楽しかったです。あ、僕も荷物を持ちましょうか。じゃあ、ありがとうございます。So let's go ahead and go over the English for that. お邪魔しました。Okay, so this is a set phrase in Japanese, and it sort of means thanks for having me. The literal translation is I intruded on you, or I was, I was in your way, something like that. Um, the first time we use this sentence is when you're going into someone's house, someone else's house. When you get into their entryway, you'll say the phrase, ojamashimasu. You will always say this. I, I still say it when I go to anyone's house. Any, any house that isn't mine. Ojamashimasu. It means I'm about to intrude on you. It's a set phrase. And when you leave someone's house, you'll often say, ojamashimashita. I intruded on you. But it doesn't literally mean that. It just mean, means, like, it's more like, thanks for having me. It's a very important set phrase. You're going to use it if you're ever in Japan and visit anyone. So, it's a good one to learn. Hi. Mata ne. Hi. No problem, basically. Mata ne. See you. Ah. Bisan. And just outside the door, Bisan was there. Was she listening? I don't know. Konnichiwa. Hello. Kino arigato. Thank you for yesterday. Ii desu yo. It's fine. Tanoshikatta desu. I enjoyed it. Ah, oh. Boku mo. Me too. Nimotsu wo mochimashou ka? Shall I carry your stuff? So she must be carrying. Now I put stuff. Nimotsu as stuff. Nimotsu technically means luggage. But it can also just mean if someone has various bags or something. It can just be their things or their stuff. So, nimotsu wo mochimashou ka? Shall I carry your stuff? Ja, well then. Arigatou gozaimasu. Thank you very much. That she's basically saying yes, please. And that's it. We're on to question time. So first, we're gonna, well no, let's go ahead over question time. I want you to tell me to say or do something nicely. So with kudasai, for example, boom wo itte kudasai. Please say boom. And I will say boom, for example. While I go ahead and take a look at your questions. いいねを押してください. I definitely like thumbs up. Oh,攻撃してください. That's a way better way of saying hit the thumbs up button, please. Thumbs up. Oh,攻撃してください. And チャンネル登録お願いします. Channel登録お願いします. That means please subscribe if you haven't already. I think most of you guys are. So thank you so much. Also, Please check out the Patreon if you haven't gotten to check it out. Thank you to all my Patreons who are here tonight. There's lots of you. 103, I think, right now. That's just so cool. 
Thank you so much. I uh, do listening and shadowing videos in here based on the dialogue in here and within Genki. We do all of the textbook practice together with you in videos on there, and we also cover the vocabulary and go into a little bit more detail on some of them that need more details covered on them. And we go over, we have you repeat and shadow the vocabulary along with Yuki's native pronunciation and stuff like that over there. There's also the stream cuts of these live streams are released early there. I usually finish the cut by Tuesday and have it up there. I release them to everybody on Sunday during the question and answer stream. So just so you're aware of that, that's what's on the Patreon. So thank you if you check that out. Have a great night, guys. Thank you for being here. As always, this has been Tokini Andy. Thank you.